But now let's talk about, let's go a little deeper than just a light. What moves you in these books? I loved The Little Island. I know that you liked that one too. We've talked about I did this. like The, the Little, Little Island. Island. I do like it. And I know that at school it's very popular. I just think also. that this book is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I think there's so many opportunities. If you read this book slowly, I mean, there are different landscapes. There are different animals. You can see nature in all sorts of different ways. Um, the birds alone. I mean, if you really pay attention right. to all the different birds mentioned, the kingfisher and the um, and the gulls, and, and so you're getting you know, science, that's right. You're getting, you're getting all getting that. Art, you can, you know, getting, right? I mean, you can right. you can pay attention to these details, and when it comes up again, like you've seen this, you've seen mm -hmm. a kingfisher, um, and what bird? I mean, this reminds me of a blue jay, and so um, and so just paying attention to which birds live in which um, climates or in which um, you know parts of the country. Um, and so you can pull a lot of out about this, but this book is beautiful. This is my favorite sentence um, in this book. Um, when the cat is asking about um, the island's connection, um, he asks the fish to explain um, how the island is part of land. And the fish says, well, let's go. I'll take you under water. And, and the cat says, I can't swim. And so the fish says, well, um, then you must take it on faith. Yes. And the cat says, what's faith? And it says, to believe what I tell you about what you don't know. And you know that's such a profound thought a, for, for a first grader, for a first right? grader. But just in, again, introducing the idea of faith. What is it explicitly? You know, it is um, believing someone that you trust about something you don't know. And you know, I think using words well and just really taking a minute to contemplate that. And that's what's great about these books. Um, sitting on the couch or just reading these books slowly give you an opportunity to talk about a word like faith that you wouldn't necessarily have in your everyday life. I mean, when you're on your hustle and bustle to soccer practice and making dinner and doing homework and doing all the routine things, you know, you don't really have maybe the contemplative moments to, to just sit down and let's say, let's define faith. That's you know? right. And that is what these books do. And such a clear illustration of right. that. I mean, right. it's, he, the cat, does not have access to the world under underwater Under, that's right. right and so he has to believe in another world than than he knows i mean that's so that's right so beautiful. and that's all, i mean so many of the books going that's forward right. in the future that's right <laughs> yes. and i think there, to piggyback off of what you said there's a line there that i like i think right after that uh the author writes like his eyes were shining like with the mystery of it or something like that i don't know right. if that's right but it's just this beautiful description of you know you can teach kids how to talk about reactions to ideas and 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 how to write about that kind of thing. And that's just a beautiful descriptive way of writing about how the cat feels about faith, yes. about something that he doesn't know. Doesn't know, hasn't heard of until that moment. It's so good to have you with us on this episode of Novel Thoughts. It was a lot of fun putting this episode together for you, and we hope it helps you on your literary journey. If you do enjoy our show, we'd love for you to let us know by liking and commenting down below. And if you like Memoria Press and the things we're doing here, join us by subscribing by hitting that button right there. Thanks so much. And let's get back to the episode. Well, and, you know, and Tanya's going to laugh at me because I am, and it's a big joke around yes. the office that I noticed. I know the where details, you're going. Right. Mm -hmm. About the books. Numbers. So, numbers. Numbers. Colors, colors, numbers and yeah. words. Um, and so, you know, this book, I just think that those things are very intentional. And, and to me, picking out those small details, I mean, the author has to pick, you know, if they're going to talk about something in quantity, they have to pick some number. That's right. And they have to pick some color. And so I think that, you know, those things are very intentional. And it gives the student, if you can talk about this book, for instance, you know, when the fireflies arrive, there are seven fireflies, which is, you know, seven's a number of, of um, perfection. And in the previous page, there are seven big trees um, and there are 17 small bushes. Um, and so when you see something like that, I feel like it's very intentional from the author. And so the use of colors and numbers and details is a very, very easy way to introduce symbolism to the student. Right. And that's one of the ways that you can teach a student to really appreciate a book and really appreciate the talents of an author. It's just say like, why do you think they chose that number? Or you don't have to go into all the explanation. You don't have to define it. You don't have to, you know, but just say, you know, this is interesting that this, this number has been selected a few different times or this color. Um, and, it, and, and symbolism is such a great way, I think, to attach to a book. That's what I love about it is looking at a book on multiple levels and seeing that the author has consistency yes. um, in terms of what they're trying to do. And they're using even the smallest details to accomplish their goals. Well, and, you know, if you... <laughs> Tanya laughs at me because I like... I, I mean, Tanya's heard it before. Tanya's heard it before. She's on her number. <laughs> this so and it's great. But, you know, you know we talk it's about... It's like everything. Like, V doesn't just read. She counts yes. as she's reading. That, that's right. That's right. One time I got an email from her about the 
<laughs> was it the Iliad? She was like, have you ever noticed the number, whatever it was? Nine, the Iliad? Number nine. I'm yeah. counting how many times yeah, the number nine right. is in the Iliad. <laughs> well, we kind of discussed this a little bit before, but you know, if you if you are doing any kind of Christian studies, if you're reading the Bible with your children, you'll notice the number seven. And it's this kind of cosmic sense of order and completion. There are seven days of creation. Uh, but one of my favorite little little instances of the number seven is in Proverbs nine. There's this beautiful description of wisdom has built her house. She's hewed out her seven pillars. And there's that idea of a complete sense of divine wisdom associated at least with the number seven. Look and at perhaps getting that's, on team that's, 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 right. We don't want to, we don't want to plant again, those ideas on these books, but we can point out, right. why do you, we can why ask do you the questions, the number seven is, right? We can ask those questions and we can point those details out. It's like, it's like looking at a spider web, right? We talked mm-hmm. about that last time. Like if you really look at it, it's a miraculous thing. And so paying attention to those details sort of ignite wonder. So Abe Lincoln right here. Yes. I really like this little book. I like the illustrations in it. And it did move me because of his love of books and his choice to do something different from what everybody else was doing, you know, to follow in his father's footsteps, working the land and and instead he's reading a book. That's right. And there's a line in here that's that really moved me. <clears throat> Abe saw that words could free or jail a man. He found that words could change the way folks thought. That book is and, is full of great writing. Yes. yes. It is full the of great writing. The last line, read the last line. The very last line. Yeah, from from the wilderness, from the wilderness to, to the, the White House. House. Yes. Yeah. Right. He learned the power of words and used them well. And when you can when you can point out ideas like this, um, you know, Abe Lincoln used words well. Words were meaningful to him in that first in that kindergarten book. That's the word right. freedom. You know, it was the it was the question. What is what what? Why is this such an important word? Right? right. And it was and it was really the word that propelled him. And in this book, the same thing. You know, he learned to use words well. And you know, that's that's a great seed that we can plant with these students because you know they're going to be doing Latin. They're going to be you know they re- we really want students to be able to use words well. I mean, that's what it, it, that's it exactly means right. to be an educated, articulate person is use words properly, grammatically correctly, um, you know, use the proper connotation, ch- choose words well that are persuasive um, if, you know, in, in rhetoric, uh, use logic well. And so introducing that idea that words are important, words are important, them, treat them seriously, um, you know, and some of our, um, and, and some of our great examples of people who um, were propelled by, a seriousness. That's right. 